a part five of the Alone in the Dark Edward playthrough. This could be the last one. I'm sitting here thinking it might be just because we're near the end of chapter four in game currently. Then there's only chapter five. But I don't know how much wrapping up or potentially boss fighting. I don't know if that would be a thing in this. There's going to be. Last time. Oh, yeah. The main thing that happened in the last part was that we were following the trail of a case that Detective Edward Carmby worked on previously, which turns out to be a kidnapping surrounding Grace, the little girl at DeSetto. Somehow killing her dad, maybe accidentally. I think. As I've said previously, I'd recommend you watch the other parts. They're great fun. And uh, you'll probably know a bit more what's going on than the, the backstory I've given you, because that's lacking in so much detail compared to what the gameplay is. And hey, you'll probably notice stuff that I won't notice, because I've been playing this for too long, over such long spaces of time. I'm probably forgetting stuff. So you can comment and you can let me know what I've missed. Hmm. Coffee? Done. I'm trying to remember the buttons. Okay, anyway, I wanted to have a look at- do I still have the patient files? Uh, they took away the patient files so I can't actually see what Grace's backstory was, which is slightly annoying. Oh, that's interesting. So just, yeah, so with the whole Edward and Grace in the previous part, if we read this note, it says, Carnby had run their car off the bridge, he pulled Grace out of the sinking car, but left her father to drown. He could have saved him, there was time, he just chose not to. Instead, he took Grace back to New Orleans and collected his paycheck. But so our, our objective is to break the Dark Man's contract. So, we have a dagger. Who is Jacob? That's my question. Oh, there we go. Hey, Dr. Gray is in his apartment. It's locked. Great. Is this one locked? Because I can go through this way. That is also locked. Oh, we just go left then right. I get it, I get it. Hello, Dr. Gray. There's now whisperings in the hallway. We've not been in here yet. This is the first time we've gone into this room. Oh, Emily's here. Detective, am I glad to see you. Lock the door, will you? I don't think Dr. Gray would appreciate us snooping around. What's going on here? Why the music just so stop so suddenly? Oh! Oh, we've got a different camera angle now. Whoa, shaking it up. What is this? A false book. There's a book missing. Ah, the book's the key. I did it, Emily. What did You've you been do? in here for like an hour and I just I walked just in and did it. rearranging the books. Well, come on, let's check it out. All right. Does he have a picture of one of those bats on his wall that I absolutely hate? I think he does. Oh. I think I'm beginning to understand. Why are we doing this? Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion. Oh, am I? Okay, there we go. What if I stand on it? That mark on the floor looks like talisman positions, but from which direction should I look at it? Ooh. I'd like to have my normal camera angle back. Okay, the snake dagger. Oh, this feels like a whole lot of stuff about a thing I don't need to know about. Uncovered several cross-referenced historical texts and an actual snake dagger. Dagger was dated to the early Middle Kingdom of Egypt, had such a clear shape of a wave. Symbolic value of the shape becomes more apparent when reading about the use for the dagger. In the passage of Possession and Exorcism, we find the snake dagger poisons the poisoner within the victim and is therefore pacified. Where the literal text would tell us that the worm dagger trumps the demon possessing the victim, tells us nothing of their reasoning. Only that somehow this dagger wins against the demon, like it had the better hand in poker. The snake dagger always went through the eye of the possessed, leaving them partially blind if they had the good luck to survive. First good meeting. Oh meet boy, you. calm down. First meeting with Jeremy Hart with transcript at his brother's. <sighs> Come on, I can read today. At his brother's. At his brother. Oh, good lord. Not brothers. Brother. At his brother Philip's home in the Garden District, New Orleans. Good to finally meet you, Mr. Hartwood. I'm here on behalf of your brother Philip. You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes, you're from DeSetto. No, that's right. I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see if there is anything I can do to help you or your family. Okay. <laughs> I understand you're full of imagination. You make up a lot of things, I suppose, says Jeremy. And you obsess over them, blurring reality and fiction. Sometimes. Do you want to tell me about the Dark Man? No, no, I don't. That's alright, perhaps there's something else you can tell me, something you know to be made up, but you hold dear. 
Juan, Dr. Gray John, who's John, no Juan, Jeremy fetched me a book, here take a look, is he, oh, is he the author? It's a magnificent book, life-changing even. The real Juan is long dead, but I like to think of him as my friend, my most beloved friend. I see, do you often do this fantasize about people you read about? No. Well, there is Jacob. Who is Jacob? Turn to the last page, Doctor. Oh, it's a newspaper article. The Prisoner of Ice, Jacob Van Ost... Ostate? How would you say that with a D and a T there? They take too long to read it or I'd get them to read it for me. Is he also your beloved friend? Oh no, Doctor, not at all. He is the fire that fights fire. Yes, I think it's clear your overstimulated imagination, this mania, needs to be tempered for you to live a normal life. I know your family calls it the Heartwood Curse, but I want you to know that there is nothing supernatural about your condition. It's all inside your head. And with that, I'm very qualified to deal with. In time, you will be cured. In time, in time. Yes, in time we will exercise all your demons, all the dark men. Jeremy just screams, apparently. <laughs> Please, Mr. Hartwood, calm yourself. Jeremy's scream alerted his niece. Emily, what happened? Oh, don't you worry your little head about it, Miss Hartwood. Your uncle and I just had our first breakthrough. If this is the first meeting, but he already has a dark man figure in his mind. So who is the dark man? Is the question still. The plot is thickening. Can we just talk? What were you saying about mass delusion? Dorsetto seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Even the name Dorsetto refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. Dorsetto was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... the black goat of the woods with a thousand young or Shubnigroth. And that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. Well, that doesn't help me with the talisman on the floor now, does it, Emily? Is there anything in here? Locked closet. All right. What items do we have about the talisman? Is there a picture in his book about the talisman and its positioning? Oh, I can go this way. If the camera was normal, I probably would have found this a lot quicker. Okay, so we found the key. Huh. Has that been there this whole time? Probably. And you just didn't know because the camera is a strange angle. I, it throws off- oh my god. Why do people have to do this? Why can't you just leave it at the normal camera angles? I don't feel I've gained anything from you changing the camera angle on me. I hate it so much. Objective. Answer the phone. Hello? The dead it can't be. Who is this? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the dark man. You can't save him. Well, I've done everything you wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective. While you still can. I don't think I recognize the voice as anyone we've met. Oh, I feel like there's a thing on the floor here that wasn't on the floor before. Oh, broken clock. Oh, does anything in the bedroom represent that, maybe? I'm just gonna do that and then... There it is. Let's go to Narnia! Let's go through the wardrobe! You look a little frazzled. Just... stupid telephone. <laughs> I know, I tried calling the police earlier. The telephone is completely dead. It's not... Yeah, no, the telephone isn't working. Is she not gonna... She has no clue we're about to go to Narnia, does she? Miss Hartwood, I think you're gonna want to see this. Is there something in the closet? Yeah, there she is. Not see it? You don't see the very obvious gate leading to whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion metaphor? I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. Fine. Fine. Catch you later. Are you going inside the closet? Yeah. You got a problem with that? No. 
Do what you think is right, detective. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Goodbye, Miss Harwood. She should just keep watching. I want to see what he, like, why would she walk away? Why wouldn't you just watch what he's going to do if he's walking through a gate in the closet you can't see? I'd keep watching. I'd see where he ends up. Anyway, she went back to read things. Now we're in the tundra. Well, I just got an achievement that says entered hell. So seemingly, we're in hell. Mm, a flare gun. I'm gonna reload everything if we're in hell. We might have to fight some things. Greenland expedition. We found the ancient. Stop. Found the ancient Stellarium, perched on a cliff face in the Arctic Ocean. Jacob was our most keen member of the expedition. He'd been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items among the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. Next day the weather became worse and we spent hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking he must be dead. I had the urge to make one final attempt to save him. So I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares and headed towards the coast and up the climb towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him, transfixed by a burning sky, that celestial lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly and said, You must leave now, Herr Stern. Go and never come back. And so I left. Oh, Jacob! Shall I just shoot one straight forward? I just want to walk into the into the snowy abyss, to be honest. Oh, This is kind of terrifying, because it's just gonna turn into nothing. Oh, waypoint flag! <laughs> Objective. Keep going. You're on the right track. I hate that noise, whatever that is. It's like grumbling. There's a grumbling noise I keep hearing. Which I guess we are in hell. I can't even see the last one. This way? I might have something to leap out at me in this blizzard. There's one. I see a light this way. Oh. This is terrifying. I hate this. It's just being trapped in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Oh, this is lovely though. Oh! The northern lights. Down there! Terrifying. Up here? Beautiful. I like that there's ice on the screen. If you look in the corners of my screen, there's ice forming. I can't run anymore. We're on the dramatic walk. Please let me run. Oh. Oh no. Let's reload our flare gun. Let's get out our shotgun. <laughs> Is that Jacob? I imagine that's Jacob. Hey you! What are you doing here? What is this place? Turn back, detective. You're not wanted here. Whoa, take it easy. I'm not your enemy. Oh, you're wrong, detective. You're wrong. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, Where did he go? Whoop! Where did he go? Where did, Where did he go? Oh. I feel on edge by all of this. <laughs> Who was he? Was he Jacob? I have to dagger Jacob. That wasn't Jacob, was it? Well, now this. Of course, the Taurus. I figured you wouldn't want your stars aligned, Jeremy, or ah, maybe that is what you need. To temper that mania of yours. Am I lining up these two lights? Yes, okay. No, the other way. Ta da! The stars are aligned. Are they not? Are they not all aligned? Oh. Wow. Cool. I'll just do this until they all align. Sounded like it was going to explode. Just <laughs> no scream. He just falls through the floor. Oh my. So 
Sorry, what? Good lord, okay. Oh yeah. God's sake, stay dead, will you? How do I Ooh. Oh boy. Can I just get him weak and then Okay, we just shoot him a bit and then we'll stab him with a dagger. Oh yeah. Stab. It's a very it's a very pleasant uh slow paced boss fight, which I enjoy. Gangling around. Ow. Okay. Longer arms than I thought. Stab him. Oh god. Ew. Here we go. so annoying that it froze just then. the last chapter. Emily's gonna be so mad that we punch someone up. <laughs> There's blood on the floor. You're awake? You are awake. Mr. Conby's up. Hey, Ooh, is it time for the I feast? you'd be knocked out for the rest of the night. <laughs> Come on out and join us, will you? I'll save you some gumbo. Good to have you back. You gave us all a good scare. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Sorry for manhandling you, but you're being violent. You stabbed Jeremy and then punched Dr. Gray. So Dr. Gray hey. is the dark man? Oh, okay. good lord, okay. Jeremy's a little strange, but everything's back to normal. Really? All thanks to you, Compact. You want to try standing up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's making sense to me now. Well, if it isn't the hero of the day. How are you feeling, Detective? Never better. How about you two? Hey, Jeremy, I didn't do too much damage, did I? You stabbed him in the eye with an ice pick. Things are fine. Very quiet. What's up with him? Painkillers? No. You see, despite you having the finesse oh my of one-eyed butcher, you managed to lobotomize dear Jeremy. Oh, no. I did what? It's actually quite impressive. It's not like I hadn't considered it myself. I just wish Jeremy could have been helped without reducing his personality to that of an oyster. But oh he's gonna live. That is ridiculous. Of course. That is actually a as ridiculous long as thing I did. Feeding him, he'll outlive the best of us. Does anyone else find it slightly ridiculous that when I stabbed Jeremy, I happened to also lobotomize him at the same time? What? What's up, Bruce? How you doing? Grace finished your mask, I see. Hey, Ruth. Glad to see you made it back to Dorsetto. You too, detective. Make sure to stay for the festivities. 
It's no Mardi Gras, but it ain't bad. All right, we'll just go and keep chat with everyone, see what's going on. Maybe this last chapter will just end with all of us chatting and that'll be it then. Ooh, could I have some stew? Good to see you back on your feet, detective. Have some gumbo. Yes, Thanks. please. Well, she is stirring that so quick. Oh. She's so affected. Hey, Batiste. Thanks for manhandling me. What are you looking for? Just keeping an eye out for the stone. Radio says it could be a wild one. Hmm. Is it gonna rip through Deceto? Because it kind of feels like it. That is one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. What's up, man? All right, tell me what the hell's about to happen here. Every year we have a little turn the page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. Symbol. <laughs> it's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know? Just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can chat Grace. Hi, Grace. Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother. It's the tree, Mother? Wait for Emily to join us. Someone getting sacrificed? Everyone knows Maybe. what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I <clears throat> insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. We sacrifice Emily. Hell are their praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, mother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever the abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, mother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Oh god. Oh, they are sacrificing Grace. Are you crazy? This is what needs to happen, Carpet. Grace, stop! Fight the tree. Um, I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't. Pla I didn't think this would happen. Okay. All right. Yeah, I didn't expect the tree to do that nonsense. Okay. Stop the black goat of the woods. I can't Wait. let that monster leave Dorsetto. I have to stop it. Oh god. Look at the carnage. Look at the mayhem that's being caused. Well, we know Grace is okay. We know Emily's okay somewhere. She was up top. So the black goat of the woods is the tree. Yes? Correct. Is everyone on the same page with that? Am I correct? I'm gonna get reloading on everything, shouldn't I? Well, maybe we are very much finishing this today then. Boy, 
loud out here. It's so much louder outside. So it's just gathering all the things. Hate that. Hate that. Hate that. Why does it have normal teeth in there too? Uh, we got some weak spots. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I guess I just shoot these little guys. Is that what I'm doing? This is very tame and I don't know if I'm doing it right. Oh, okay. That was meant to happen. That's fine. Ew! This looks like a spider. I hate it. Ew. Oh, oh boy. Okay. I'm all out of bullets. Really? Just bombing up some normal monsters, I see. Just hacking and whacking. No! We got this. We go again. Oh, okay, we have to start the whole bit again. Just reload everything. I feel like I could save some uh, machine gun ammo. Oh, can I get this last one? There we go. How many of that? Five? Six, maybe? Ah! Okay. We're fine. Okay, these just take one hit. Three. What is attacking me? That was another one. Woo! Oh boy. Machine got it. Ow! Oh good lord. Oh god. Oh boy. I don't really know how I know where you're gonna attack me from. Ow! 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 Oh! Oh, good lord, he sat on me! That's the other little guy. I can't tell. Oh, there's little spots on his legs. I see. Whoop! Ooh, a crucifix weapon. Lovely. The music's real great. Honestly, it feels pretty dramatic and pretty heroic at this point. But I'm still trying to get my bearings on what on earth I'm doing here. Come on! Come on! I just need time to reload! Please! Please give me time to reload! Still one? Go away! Okay, uh, leg patches. Leg patch. Other leg patch. Last leg patch. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay, perfect. Just switch to a different weapon. Everything's fine. Oh, well, we can just reload this now. Oh! Ew, I hate this thing so much. It's terrible. We go in again. Whoop! Ah! No, no, I need more ammo for this. I need more ammo for this. There's gotta be some more somewhere, right? Okay, machine gun. Leg. Leg. What's the other ones? There's one. There's a patch. There's a patch. Uh. There's a patch. This feels bizarre. This is obviously the darkness we're kind of fighting, right? Is that it? Did we do it? I think Queen did it. Cause I mean, that looked kind of like the darkness thing we made earlier. Where's Emily and the child? Oh. Detective. I wonder if Grace made it. She crawled out. I try to tell you. Why is that there subtitle so, so tiny? Evidence. Their devotion to the black goat was like nothing I've ever seen before. I felt so dumb believing any of it, but I'm glad I did. Are you okay? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. 
How are you doing, sweetie? I kind of like it. You ruined everything, <laughs> but I'm not mad. Grace, you almost died like 10 minutes ago. Are you actually okay? All right, you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Can I come? I thought you said you didn't need saving. Don't leave her. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us. So that was the black goat and we got rid of it and we saved Jeremy and Grace and everyone else is mauled to death. It's this strange thing where you're jumping between reality and what's going on in someone's brain that like Dr. Grey is real, the dark man's in Jeremy's head. When we stabbed Jeremy, I believe that was just in like an accidental, we were running around Deceto probably like a maniac whilst we were seeing the Jacob scene and we happened to stab Jeremy in the eye in the perfect place that we gave him a lobotomy at the same time. And then we punched the dark man that we were seeing who was actually Dr. Grey at the time. So that's it for the Edward Carnby side of Alone in the Dark. I thoroughly enjoy this kind of game, so I knew I would like it and I did, I really liked it. Am I still slightly confused on some parts of the story? Yes. It's slightly confusing for me jumping between reality and not reality and that crossover at times, for the most part, you know exactly when you're not in real life anymore. The very final boss I think has me the most confused. The black goat being clearly there and clearly being fought off by Emily and all of us looking at the carnage afterwards. That's what has me slightly stumped, because every other enemy previously has been when we've not been in reality. From what I can gather from all the notes and all the clues, the mass hysteria of everyone at Deceto was surrounding doing a ritual for this black goat, hence the sacrificing of Grace. This might sound bizarre, but I do wonder if everyone at Deceto was almost aiding in Jeremy, like, having to dig deep and explore these places in his mind because he knew stuff that they needed for the ritual so maybe they were ramping up uh things to do with the dark man was dr gray just dressed up as a dark man and it's not actually as deep as just a weird crossover between the worlds it might sound crazy but these are the thoughts that i'm having currently about the storyline and what was represented by what obviously when we killed jacob we also stabbed jeremy in the face and accidentally lobotomized him which is just so silly it has me wanting to play emily's side to see what's different i looked it up there's apparently an hour to an hour and a half of unique gameplay for each character but like 80 percent of the rest of it is the same you'd have different dialogue between different characters so i'd learn maybe more from emily's side as well and I could piece it all together. I think that's the intent, really. I don't know if I'll play Emily's side for the channel, because for me, I'll be editing so much of the same gameplay that I'll probably play it in my own time and I will explore the storyline and understand it more, but I'm not sure I'll film it. It's not a definite no, I'm just not sure yet. I'm gonna ponder it for a little while. All in all, I loved this. I knew I'd love this game. I loved the gameplay. Honestly, my favourite parts was running around Deceto, solving puzzles and being a detective. Uh, less so the combat. The combat wasn't very fun. I wish I could shove enemies. Um, dodging wasn't great. Reloading took way too long in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed it and you enjoyed the whole series if you did watch it all. Again, if you have any thoughts and like conclusions on what was going on in the story, pop them down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'd like to read them. I want to see some other perspectives. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun time. Make sure to give it a like and subscribe for anything else I put out. I don't know what I'm playing after this, but uh, it'll be something fun. I'll see you very soon. Bye.